Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro, and today I'm doing something I have never done before, and that's teaching a ZBrush tutorial. I feel um, very unqualified for this, which is why I feel qualified for this, which is a really weird thing to say. Basically, what I mean is when I watch ZBrush tutorials, they're done by professionals. Basically, they use a lot of terminology. It's taken me a couple years to, to understand. So what I'm hoping is that I can take you through a really basic tutorial on ZBrush, all the things that I wish I knew how to do that were keeping me from using ZBrush, specifically on a tablet and using the Artist Pad from Tablet Pro. Uh, the goal of this is to let you effectively model in ZBrush from the couch or wherever. Um, that's kind of my MO, my motivation is just, just to make it easier for us to create and do things from a lot of different locations. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna go through what we're going to be working on in this tutorial. Uh, we're gonna do move and pan, uh, how to navigate in ZBrush, uh, how to add and subtract material. So you're adding clay, subtracting clay, um, smoothing, uh, that type of thing. Uh, also, how to increase the resolution on your model. So if you're drawing something that's really low, uh, low polygons and it looks crappy and you want to make it look sharper how do you do that how to fix lag in zbrush and there's a specific setting in performance that we need to adjust uh, how to fit fix glitches um, by doing a control drag outside of the model so that you can if you have something that looks really funny on your model or starting to deform or or look destroyed uh, how do you fix that and get it back to where it should be um, how to sculpt on multiple objects. I, I didn't know how to make a new subtool and then how to switch to it. So uh, I didn't know how to drag or to draw on one or sculpt on one and then sculpt on the next object. Um, so sculpting on multiple objects. Um, how to make and add new shapes to your model. Uh, how to color objects. So if you want to paint uh, the model that you're making, how do you do that? And then a couple troubleshooting tips. So hopefully that will get you to a spot within about 10 minutes where you feel like you can play in ZBrush and have fun. I'm using ZBrush Core, um, and this will all work with ZBrush Core or the full version of ZBrush. Okay, so we just opened up ZBrush, and this is ZBrush Core. And um, you can see you can choose from a bunch of different things. We're going to choose the Dynamesh Sphere, 128. Um, 128 versus 32 versus 64. These are all just going to be... Um, this one's going to be a little smoother. This is going to be a little rougher. So higher resolution, lower resolution. We're going to start with the 128. And you can see it here on the screen. Now, this is a really easy way to understand where you're at. Now, if we draw a little plus sign here and pretend it's a nose, you can see exactly how these correlate. So I would use this, definitely use this if you're, if you're not sure where your model's at. All right, so navigation. We're going to go here using the artist pad and you can see we're panning and rotating and zooming in and out on our model. So if you're using the artist pad, this is pretty easy. And that's what this tutorial is about using the artist pad and ZBrush together. So if you guys are trying to do that other ways, um, I have a couple other videos that will go into that or you can watch some of the other videos here on YouTube. All right, so we did move and pan navigation. Now we're going to go to add and subtract. Okay, so if you're using if you're using ZBrush and you have a two button pen, you can hold the button down, uh, the eraser button, which is this front one on the R520. And if you need the a two button stylus, this one's in the store. Uh, in my store, and I'll put the link in the description. You can see you can add and subtract by holding the eraser button down. You can see right here how that works. Um, Z add and Z sub, these will do the same things. You can toggle up here between those two things. And you can create a button over here that will switch between these back and forth so you can press one and press the other. Uh, you can use the pen tool also from Tablet Pro and I'll link to that. You can use that to map the side button on a surface pen, a one button pen, to Alt. And then you can use Alt in order to do this. But there's a couple different ways to handle adding and subtracting in ZBrush and there are some very good solutions that didn't exist uh, even six months ago. All right, so you're modeling and you want to increase the res resolution of the model. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to zoom in. You can see um, 
here how um, pixelated and how low um, the resolution is on this model. So if you press Control D, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, increase the geometry here. So this is dividing. And so what it's doing is just adding more polygons. So it's taking the polygons that are existing and um, cutting them into smaller pieces. All right, so now if I draw on the model, you're going to see it's a lot smoother than here where the subdivisions are lower. Again, Shift-D is going to subdivide, and um, Control-D is going to divide. You want to keep in mind that that will slow down your computer um, depending on the machine, the higher um, polygon count is going to be harder for the computer to keep up. So how do you fix lag if you get lag? All right, so we're going to go up here into Preferences, Performance, Max Threads, putting this all the way to 8, so you're using the maximum CP, uh, CPU threads, um, actually causes problems. <laughs> so <laughs> you'd think that would fix it. It does not. Turning Multi-Draw off. Um, can help as well, but that's not actually necessary. Just bring this down, max threads to six. You may have to do that multiple times while you're running because that resets. It's unfortunately not something that saves in ZBrush. There are fixes to that, and I have it in another ZBrush video from earlier this year, so I'll link to that in the description. So that will make moving this model, uh, navigating, and sculpting actually really nice and buttery smooth. So make sure you have that turned on or down. Let's talk about adding shapes. We have a sphere here and we're doing uh, our sculpting. You can see the brushes down here. You can also press B in order to get that brush palette to pop up and then press another uh, keyboard shortcut to select the next one. Um, and that's pretty easy to figure out. All right, so here we're sculpting, but I wanna add some eyes. So how do we do that? Okay, so over here in the tools, you can choose to add another object here, like spheres. Um, let's do double clicking. We'll get rid of that, by the way. All right, so I clicked on Make Poly Mesh 3D. So now. Looking at this, you can see that one uh, object has turned dark, which means it's, it's inactive, and so you can't you can't do anything to the uh, original object, the original that we uh, created. These are the only active ones right now. So uh, what do we do? Well, we're in draw mode. We're going to switch to um, move, and this is going to scale them larger and smaller and this will let us move them in and out. So play around with these arrows here. The white one allows you to drag it around the screen. This is going to scale, and these are going to deform these cubes here, or rectangles here, will let you deform the, the model. Okay, so that looks okay to me. Um, for right now, that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and um, move back into draw mode. Now, let's say I want to draw on this. And, I, oh, okay, that's not working the way I want. So I'm going to pick a brush, and I try and draw, and that doesn't work. It only draws here on this part. So if I hit Control and drag off the screen, that's going to add those to my um, model that I already have. Now, this is okay, but now I'm drawing. I'm drawing on both things. So let's say I don't want to do that. I want to make one. So, uh, by the way, that's how you add to that. You can do that a couple different ways. Um, using the um, primitives here is a good way to do it. And then there's a couple other ways that you can do it. All right, so let's say I want to actually add something that doesn't blend with the current model. So I have this right here. Uh, I'm going to go to Subtool and choose Append. And I have created this uh, as a uh, hotkey. So if you hit Control, Alt, and click, you can uh, customize the hotkey. So either way, let's go ahead. I'm going to press the button. We're going to add a sphere. And you can see I made a giant sphere. Again, we're going to switch to move. And you can see, actually, it's using just my regular model. So I'm controlling the model that was already there. 
uh, what I want to do is I want to control the new one. So I'm going to click Alt and tap on it. Okay, now you can see, nope, the same one. <laughs> so I'm uh, going to go Alt and click. There we go. All right, we're going to make that small. Really small. And we're going to drag it, rotate, pull it forwards. All right, that looks pretty good. Oops. Uh, yeah, that looks fine. All right, so uh, if I click Alt and Tap, you're going to see that one stays darker. Click Alt and Tap. And this is how I can go and edit on each one. So we're going to duplicate this. So I'm going to hit this button right here, which is Control-Shift-D. And then we're going to move that second one over here. And we're going to push it in just a little bit. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and switch back to draw mode, which is Q. And now you can see that we have just this one, one eye active. So we have our, our brush set to clay. Uh, draw size is right here. You can use the draw size slider right here to adjust that. Now you see this one is a little bit low resolution, so I want to make that a high resolution. So I can, uh, again, I can do that divide that I did before, and that's going to improve that so that I'm, it looks exactly the way I want. All right, so let's go ahead and divide it a couple times. All right, that looks nice. And we'll zoom back out. Alt click on this one. Uh, let's divide it. All right, now that looks a little funny to me. So if something looks a little funny on the screen to you and you're not sure exactly why or what's going on, uh, go ahead and hit Control and drag off of the screen. And that uh, will typically fix a lot of different glitches and errors that you get. Um, not this one, so I'm just going to undo it. <laughs> okay. I'll click. Uh, sometimes you might have um, an extra model in there. So you may be painting on a second copy of it, if that's the case. Here you can go over here and delete. And uh, yes, that's okay. Again, those need to be double clicked. Okay, now it's possible that I have, um, if I sculpt on this, it will, yes, it's working correctly. Good. All right, let's go ahead and divide that again. All right, looks good. Okay, so let's move on to our next part. Okay, we're on to our last section here on how to color the objects. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back here to our model. Now looking at this, this is pretty gray um, because we have the material set as gray. So click material. Um, we have matte cap gray. We're gonna choose skin shade. Um, keep it here before we even go to painting because we want our, our colors to look white. Um, on the other material, our whites are going to look gray and a fairly dark gray, and we don't really want that. So, all right, right here, um, to get to the right click menu, by the way, you can just tap on one of these. Um, uh, both the zoom and the rotate will get you to that, that menu. So say we want to paint, so we can choose here, paint, or you can choose B, brush, and choose paint from this menu. And, um, I just forget you have to tap on it there. So say I try and paint over here and you go, oh, it's not painting. Um, we have just the eye selected. You can see it's lighter color. So we're going to choose another color. Let's choose red and you see, uh-oh, it's colored the entire thing red. So how do we fix that? That's not what I wanted. So tap here, let's bring that back to white. So this area, I'm not entirely sure all the troubleshooting steps, I know a couple of them. Um, so if you're trying to paint in the model and instead is turning everything to a different color, there's a couple things you can check. Make sure that you have, and you can play with tapping on these ones to, to decide which one is actually being selected. Switching color here um, can also make a big difference on whether or not you're actually painting and choosing new colors. So let's choose a green. 
And now if I'm doing this and I have the wrong one selected here and I switch colors, let's go ahead and select this one. And then I change the color. You notice it's not going to change the color correctly because I have the wrong one down here selected. So I'm going to select this one here on the right. And now when I switch colors, we should get a different color. And that took me a long time to figure out. Also make sure that you have one of these selected. If these are not selected, you're not going to get anything on the screen when you paint. Okay, so again, we're painting here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And we want to paint on this. So we're going to Alt, click, and select. And you can see us that we can now paint directly on here. You can choose different strokes and brushes over here, like freehand. And uh, let's adjust the size of the brush down. I'm going to choose right here. And you can see uh, this is really cool. It looks nice, and it's got pressure. If you don't have pressure in your model, um, then uh, you're going to need to install a WinTab driver. And I'll put the link to that also in the description. Uh, actually, I'll just make a zip file, and you can download a couple different things, including this preset, um, Tablet Pro, the installer. Um, and uh, uh, that should help get you started. All right, so here's our model. I think that's most of the things that, that I didn't know how to do in the beginning that I really wish that I understood. Um, there's a whole lot in this program that I don't understand, but I think coming at it from the perspective of a beginner uh, without quite so many um, assumptions in, in, in the beginning, I think is helpful. So if you guys found this useful, you can now model inside of ZBrush. Um, actually, we didn't talk about one thing here. So let's go ahead. We're going to switch to a brush here. And let's go ahead and increase the draw size. So we're drawing, and we want to smooth. Tap Shift. And that'll let you smooth. It'll let you smooth, actually, the paint as well. Shift here. If there's a section that you don't want to paint, let's bring the draw size down tap control, this is going to mask. So now when we do something, like if we go to paint, this is going to let me paint right around this, just like we put a masking tape on a wall that we are painting. And now you'll see here, to take that mask, to take it off, you can uh, drag here. Um, if you want to invert the mask, then you just click on the screen after control, tap control, and then tap the screen. So let's go ahead, we'll remove that mask, and you can see that I was able to paint um, this shape with that, that part blocked out. And then we'll smooth it a little bit. It's pretty cool. And it's very powerful what you can do in ZBrush and even ZBrush Core. All right, if you guys found this useful, then please subscribe. Um, click the notification icon, share it with your friends, like the video, uh, all that typical jazz. All right, I hope you guys are doing well, being creative. Uh, have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Uh -huh.